I'm Joe Hahn, a professional engineer. So now you're thinking about opening up your own engineering business. Are you ready? We'll see. Let's see right now. In this video, I'm going to give you a couple of different tips on what you should have already gained by now before you even go out and start your own business. Tip number one. Tip number one is that you need to have some experience and a lot of it, especially in engineering and the different fields that we do in engineering. And also, you should have a lot of in, uh, experience in the field. The more field experience you have, the better the engineer you will be. Most engineers who try to go out and become a project engineer a little bit too quick without that field experience will have a real tough struggle ahead of them. Now that you have plans to become your own business owner, that experience will be immensely important to you now. Because once you start your own business, there's really no one to talk to and there's no one to give you advice at that point. You're going to rely upon all the experience that you've had in the past in order to do the work as a professional engineer owning your own business. You're going to remember the times when you were working on a construction crew, working with a surveying crew, or even when you started off as a CAD operator and later became a CAD designer and eventually a project engineer. And if you stay long enough in <laughs> that company or other companies, becoming a project manager. That experience will be invaluable to you as a business owner. So starting too early will cause you probably to fail at a business of engineering. The more experience you have, the bigger the payoffs will be. Tip number two is to build a referral list. A referral list is a list of individuals that you know in different disciplines. Architects, developers, structural engineers, other civil engineers, other CAD designers, CAD operators, even the people that uh, supply the supplies, such as uh, uh, printing shops, uh, software individuals such as Autodesk, all are important to you as an engineer owning his own business, knowing other people. The more people that you know when you start, the more likely you'll get leads to people who need your services. Tip number three, and that is to have some cash. When you first start off in a new business venture, there's no pay for a while, and especially for engineers who work on progress invoices. Payment on these are usually 30 to 60 days out from the time you issued the invoice. So it's important <laughs> that you have some cash already built up, at least three to six months of cash. That could be anywhere from $30,000 to $50,000 saved up just to start your engineering business. On top of that, there's certain things you're gonna have to have to have your own engineering business. One, you're gonna need a computer, you should have already. Two, that computer has to be able to run engineering software such as AutoCAD, the latest versions of AutoCAD. If you're going to do hydrology work, the hydrology software that you're going to need. If you're going to do traffic engineering type work, you're going to need the latest traffic software in that. Also, you're going to have to have all the latest uh, Microsoft software such as for Word. You're going to need it for Excel or any of those other kind of programs that we would run to, to create technical reports. Now, something that you may have not think about, but you're also going to need a business license. And depending on the state that you may be in, the, the, the business license is not only at the state level, but also at the local level. Then you're going to need also insurance. And there's three types of insurances that you're going to need. Professional liability insurance. You're going to need property insurance. And you're also going to need errors and emissions insurance. All insurance is important to have because even though we are very good at what we do and we never make a mistake, if we ever do make one mistake that's big enough to cost thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars or even millions of dollars, that insurance is there to protect you. So it is very important to have insurance. So all that's a cost that you're going to have to pay for just to start your business. So thirty to $50,000 or more is what you're going to need just to start your business. Tip number four. 
starting out on your own, you're going to be doing something that you've probably never done before, and that is your business skills. All engineers, once they become project engineers, are very good at engineering. They have it down pat pretty well for operations of engineering of how to do it, but they may not have the skills necessary in order to do the financials, doing accounts payable, accounts receivables, doing reports that are needed in the financial area. They also may not be very good at writing proposals, finding clients, developing clients. All these are business skills that you need. And of course, the main business skill that you need in owning your own business is marketing. How do you market your services, especially when you're just starting out and never have done this before, you have to be able to market your services and what you're capable of. What are you an expert at and who needs those services that you are better at than anyone else at providing? That's what you have to do in marketing. Tip number five, do your market research. Worst thing to do is to start a business and find out that they, your community doesn't really need your services right now. They have more, more engineers providing that same service than there are projects out there to provide to those engineers. What you need to first do is to take a look and see if your community has, doesn't have enough engineers or enough companies providing their services in any key or niche area of engineering in your local area. This is very important. Or you may have to look at maybe going somewhere else in another community nearby that doesn't have enough engineering companies providing services in that area. So it's always important before you start a company, make sure you look at the community, find out, talk to people you know, talk to uh, other developers, other contractors, other engineers possibly. If they know if the market is looking for another company to come in and provide services Tip number six, writing a business plan. You know, a business plan at first can seem kind of scary. It sounds like it could be 20, 30 pages long of all this data and, and, and research. But in reality, a business plan can be something you can draw up on a, a Microsoft Projects or you can draw up on a PowerPoint presentation on a, just maybe one slide and show where you plan to get the money at to start your company Who's your targeted clients? Who is, uh, who is the people that you're going to partner with in order to provide those services with? What is going to be your cost structure for your different services? Uh, if you're going to have any products you're going to have for sale, what are the, the fees are going to be for those? Who's the management of your company? And how are you going to pay people? What's going to be their salaries that you're going to offer them? That's a, a very simple presentation that can be done on a, a PowerPoint presentation, if nothing else. Now, some, you'll read some books say they write it on a napkin on a dining room table, their business plan. Yeah, maybe sketch out some ideas and everything. But in reality, a business plan should be written out and, and actually say what it is that, you have, that you're gonna start your company with and how you're gonna go find new clients. Now, why is writing a business plan a business plan is so important. Well, one, first, if you plan to hire somebody to come into your company and you're just starting out, to encourage them to do that and to trust that you're going to be around for a while. Uh, a future employee, especially an upper level employee like a project engineer, they will want to see that business plan. They will want to know that you have plans for the future, that you are, uh, are financially stable now and that you are financially stable in the near future so that they know by coming to work with you that you're gonna be able to pay them their salaries and their benefits. So that's one reason. The second reason is that you may not have enough money, that thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 up front that you need in order to start a company. You may need to go find an investor or you may need to go find a loan of some sort to create the capital that you need in order to start the company. And those people, bankers and investors will want to see your business plan. It's very important that you write a business plan and you follow the structure that is recommended in that business plan. Tip number seven, your business location. Now a lot of people may think, hey, I can start my company in my bedroom. Yes, you can. But as a professional engineer, don't you think you should have a professional office? So 
Yes, there's different types of professional offices that you can find in the community, one of which is called an executive suite. An executive suite is a small room. It could be a 10 by 10 room and only costs a few hundred dollars a month, which is not very big, but they also provide other services such as a break room area, maybe a conference room. They can even have an answering service for you for like a secretary answering your phones and directing calls back to your office. This gives a professional appearance to your company as you're just starting out. Now, if you have the capital and the resources, you, of course, can go into a larger office with one or two rooms or three rooms. And as your company grows, you can add more and more rooms to your office. But that's just starting out. There are only really two choices for a professional engineer, and that's really you should either start an executive suite or uh, a small office uh, with one or two rooms, something to keep your your lease about low for each month, but still gives a professional appearance. Tip number eight, you have to choose a business structure. What is a business structure? Well, there's four. First of all, it's what's called a sole proprietor company. You are the only owner of your company. And as such, you answer no one. You have 100% ownership in the company. And this is very commonly what starts a company with is a sole proprietorship. There's only one person and no one else and that may be you. The second type of business structure is called a partnership. Now a partnership is usually two professional uh, individuals or more that come together and they have either equal parts of the company or not equal parts. It's all written out exactly who does what in the company. Someone may be really good at surveying and other person may be really good at engineering. And so they have a partnership between the two of them and they work together to draw clients into the company. And they share equally on the liabilities and risk of the company. And they also share equally on the profits of the company. The third type of business structure is what's called a limited liability corporation. It's not quite a sole proprietor or partnership and it's not quite a corporation. <laughs> It kind of falls in between. They're limited liabilities. So you could have one owner or you can have multiple owners of the company, but the, the risk factor is very limited to those individuals, but yet it acts as a corporation. The fourth business structure is a corporation, and this is usually for stockholders. Companies that are raising capital normally go to a corporation uh, type structure, and then they can sell stocks in their company. Usually most professional engineers who start off and, and form their own company will start off as a sole proprietor or partnership company. Tip number nine, and this is really important, and that is choosing your business name. Now, some people will choose their own last name and then call it engineering afterwards. My name is Joe Hahn, so Hahn Engineering would be a logical uh, name for an engineering company, although that's not my company, uh, engineering company's name. Other companies may name themselves uh, other names. And if you choose a name that isn't related to engineering, like maybe to say uh, maximum as a word for a company, it doesn't say what it is. And so uh, when someone sees that name, they don't know how to re refer to it. But if you say maximum civil engineering company, now someone knows who that company is. So it's very important on how you name your company. The other importance to it is that if you say something like uh, premium engineering company or, or apex engineering company or top of the line a uh, engineering company, uh, that starts off with a branding thing. And are you truly, when you start off a company, the best engineering company in town? I don't think so, but you may be. And if you are, then go ahead and use the name. But uh, it's uh, like saying a superior engineering. Any of those terms would be uh, high, uh, really hard to live up to if you're just starting off and you're not necessarily at that point yet in, in the, in the uh, life cycle of that business. Tip number 10, and that is registering your company with the federal government and with your state government and your local government. Another reason for registering your company is getting your tax ID number. 
Yes, your tax ID number. You will be taxed running your own company. That tax ID number, especially from the federal government, you, it will be very important to you at the end of the year, but it's also important when you come to banking. So you need to register your company as soon as you come up with the name of the company and what services you're providing in that company. Then you can go online and register your company at the federal level and at the state level and get your tax ID numbers. If you're gonna be selling any kind of products or anything, you will also need to have a resale uh, tax ID number from the state. So those are important reasons why you need to register your company. Tip number 11, before you do anything in your business, you need to apply for your, your license and also any permits that you may need. Each state is different, each uh, community is different on, on what those licenses and permits are required. If you're gonna be working in your home, you may have to have some sort of uh, particular license for that. You may, if you're going to be um, doing any type of geotechnical uh, uh, services that require certain chemicals and everything, you'll have to have certain permits for that to store on site. All the, uh, these various other licenses that you may require that are special to your community for running a business, especially a business in engineering. And uh, such as my company in Nevada, we have about five different licenses that we have just to run our company uh, in Nevada. So uh, be prepared that you're going to have to be <laughs> having multiple licenses in order to operate as a civil engineer in whatever state you may be in. Tip number 12, uh, we recommend right off before you even start your, your business is to get a bank account, a business bank account. Now, it's the last on the list because it's going to require some things. Your, your federal tax ID number, <laughs> they're going to want to see that. And they're also going to want to see your business license in order, uh, in order for you to open up a bank account, a business bank account. And uh, once you have the business bank account, then you're going to get your, uh, your business uh, checks and you're going to be able to write checks in the name of your business. So that leads to you got to have accounting software uh, from day one keeping track of all your expenses and all your income and revenue that you're making in your company because it, either on a quarterly basis or on an annual basis, you're going to have to pay taxes on that. So uh, it's important from day one to get your accounting going right off. And that starts with initially getting a bank account, a business bank account. So there you have it. 12 tips on starting your own engineering business. It sounds like a lot, and, and yes, it is actually, but those are all important. If you do all the 12 of those tips that I just gave you, that you'll be able to start your own business, run your own business, and, and begin working on your business day one instead of working in the business um, as a project engineer. You want to be a manager of your business, and that's why you started the business, is to manage it. And so that's what we call working on the business, keeping up with those 12 tips that I just gave you. So if you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button here on, on the side of me here, and then you'll be able to see our videos as they come out. Each video will be talking about business of engineering. So each has little tidbits and of information that will be important to you on running your successful engineering business. And also look up here in the corner, you'll see a video that we recommend from our list of videos that you should watch next. So see you on the next video.